So we're going to talk today about how to plot a graph. We have um, family A and family B, we've looked at their rubbish collection over an eight week period and we've added uh, every week, last week's, uh, all the rubbish that they'd collected all the previous weeks. So family A collected two kilos in the first week. By the second week they'd collected two plus three, giving them a total of five kilos. So we can see that here we have plus three, plus three. In week three they'd collected eight kilos in total since the start. Family B had collected seven kilos in the first week and then in the second week they had collected 13 kilos, 18. So these uh, weights are being all added to the previous week. And we have to plot a graph. So the most sensible thing would be to plot a graph using as much space as we can. So I'm used, trying to use the whole board here. I have eight weeks on the bottom, so it seems fairly sensible to use uh, 10 centimeters for every week down here, giving me eight, my eight weeks. And then I have a maximum weight of 49 kilos, so it seems fairly sensible to use uh, ten, uh, every 10 centimeters is five kilos. And I've sketched in there the 10, 10 kilos, but let's even put the 5 kilos as well, so we can make our graph as accurate as possible. Because the key to, to, to doing good graphing here is to make sure that your graph is as accurate as possible. Make sure that you have these little lines here showing exactly where the point 15 is, um, which of course in this case should have been 25, 35, and 45. On your papers, you've got lined papers, it's much better than this, um, but we can use the ruler anyway. Once we've got the axis right, and we know that it would be sensible if I have to work out here the average waste per week for each family. The average waste per week, we can get quite easily if we use the gradient. So the gradient y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it would be very sensible of me to put average waste on my y-axis. Then I'll be getting my units directly. So let's put waste here. So we label our axis waste in kilograms. And this is our y-axis. We remember that the y is the perpendicular one because the letter y has a long tail. This is our x-axis, which we will label as number of weeks. And now we've set up our axis, we can actually start putting in the data points. Always useful to use a different colour pen. Uh, and we can just start with family A. We'll make them in blue. And in week one, family A threw away two kilos, which is going to be four centimetres on my graph. So we will have that family A threw away four kilos in week one. By two weeks, by week two, they had thrown away all five kilos. Week three, they had thrown away eight kilos, which on its, that would be 16 centimeters using my ruler. So we're using the ruler if you don't have lined paper to make sure that you get as accurate points as you can. At week four it would be 11, which will be 22 centimeters. At week five it's 14, which would be 28 centimeters. At week six, it's 17, double seven, it's 34. So I have 34 centimeters for 17 kilos. And at week seven, it's 21 kilos, which will be 42 centimeters, because one kilo is represented by two centimeters. And at week eight, we'll finish off with 25 centimeters, 25 kilos, which will be 50 centimeters. So here we have it for family A. 
Dots are very difficult to see, so let's make it very easy to make sure that uh, even after we've drawn our line, we can still see our original points by putting a little cross. And it's much more accurate to put a little cross than a big fat dot here. The dot's difficult to see in the middle, but the dot is the cross is nice and easy to see in the middle. So when you plot your data points, put nice neat crosses. And now I've asked you to get the average waste per week, so we have to make a straight line best fit through these points. We know that we had zero waste at uh, week zero, so we have to go through the origin. And now we have to try and make a point that goes as close as possible to as many crosses. You can see if I put my line here, everything here is, all the crosses are below the, the ruler. And I need as much, about as many crosses above as I do below. I still have to go through Zila. So I'm going to move my ruler down until about half my crosses have disappeared. There's one disappeared, two disappeared, three disappeared. About there, I think, maybe slightly lower. So let's plot this line in and we'll hopefully have got the best fit. In your um, books, you'll be able to see through your ruler a little bit better than I was able to. So you can see that mm, it's not quite perfect. We're a little bit low here. We should have maybe gone up a little bit higher. We don't, the points that are below here are very close to the line, whereas unfortunately the points that are above here are a little bit uh, further away. So I probably not feel happy with that. I'd probably take that one away and want to redo it, being a perfectionist. So let's redraw that line and get it a little bit closer to our top points here. So be only a little bit below one and probably go as accurately as I could through this graph here. So let's try again, see if we end up with points that we are a little happier with. Well what we can see here is we're, now we're almost a little bit too low, we're below on everything and it's only this point at the top here that is above. But I'm a little bit happier with that than I am with the other one, so we'll keep that, that's good enough for now. We now have to write what does the blue line mean? Well the blue might means family A's waste. Okay, so we're telling everyone what the blue line represents. Now we're going to do the same thing but we're going to plot for family B where we start with week one they had seven kilos which will be equivalent to 14 centimeters at week two 13 kilos equivalent to 26 centimeters at week three 18 kilos Two 18s are 36, that would be equivalent to 36 centimetres. Week 4, 26 kilos, that would be equivalent to 52 centimetres. And week 5, 31 kilos, which would be equivalent to 62 centimetres. Week 6, 36 kilos which would be equivalent to 72 centimeters week seven would be 42 kilos that would be equivalent to 84 centimeters and week eight would be equivalent to 49 kilos which would be equivalent to 98 centimeters and to get these really accurately, I should be checking that my lines are going up perpendicular. It's, very, it's a bit difficult to do that with this type of ruler, but hopefully it's good enough. Now let's make sure that our night lines are neat enough so we can see where we should put the line of best fit for family B. And we can see that... Um, 
Seems to be a little bit of a jump here. Did we do four week at 11, 26 kilos? Is that the right point? Probably measure that again. Week four, 26 kilos should be 52 centimeters. So it should be there, yes, it should, it's in the right place. So now we'd like the line of best fit for this line. And my ruler isn't quite long enough. We can see that we're going somewhere around here. As many points above the line as below and about the same distance apart. As close as we can get anyway. And let's extend. And again, it will be much easier for you to do this in your books where you have your lined paper than I have. Well, we have a few more points above the line. One, two, three, four, five points above the line. Two on the line and one below the line. So this graph again should have gone up slightly, but it, it just demonstrates the principle anyway. This is family bees waste. So we always explain what we're doing as well. We call this the key to the graph showing what the graphs, what the lines on the graphs are representing. And we would like to know the average waste per week. Well, a good way to do that would be to take a point that's already going exactly through the gradient. Um, even though the gradients aren't perfect, we'll just, I'll just show you an example of what this should look like. So at week six, we know that family B had 36 kilos of waste. So let's take the gradient, which is the rise over run, all the way down for family, uh, family B, sorry. What's the difference in the y-axis from 36 all the way down to zero? Well, that would be 36 kilos minus zero kilos. That would be the change in the rise. We call this the rise, the vertical axis, how much have we changed? We've gone from 36 kilos down to zero. And during that same period, in the way that we've gone from the graph and the y-axis, we take the same period on the x-axis. How much has the x-axis changed? When y changed 36 kilos, how much did the x-axis change? Well, the x-axis changed at the same period from six weeks down to zero weeks. So the change in the x-axis here was 6 minus 0. So we can see that here we get equals 36 divided by 6. So it's 6 kilos per week. The average amount that family B threw away was about 6 kilos per week. Using this formula, y2 minus y1 equals x2 minus x1. And another way of remembering that is the rise over the run. The rise is how much it goes up in height, the difference in the height, divided by the difference in the horizontal, the, the way we're running. So a lift going up compared with running along the ground. What about family A then? Well, let's take a point that's on the graph here. We can see that point uh, at seven weeks, we have a point that's exactly on the graph. So what's the difference in weight on week seven from this point up here to this point down here? Well, at week seven, we know that family A had thrown away 21 kilos. So this point must be written up here at 21 kilos. And down here at the horizontal axis, it's zero. So family B, family A has 21 minus zero. And the period of time that we're looking at here is from 7 all the way back to 0. So the change in the x-axis is from 7 to 0. So we have 21 divided by 7, which is 3 kilos per week. So we can see that family A was throwing away about 3 kilos per week, and family B was throwing away about six kilos per week. We've made a clear graph, we've labelled the x-axis, we've labelled the y-axis, we've made sure that we've shown that both our graphs are proportional, 
because they both go through the origin. We've worked out how to calculate the gradient, the change in the y-axis divided by the change in the x-axis for both of the families. And this is a typical line diagram sort of problem. So um, good luck in solving more examples of those. The next one we'll look at, oh, one thing is, some of you feel tempted to use, when you're trying to find the average, you mix it up with the word mean, that you think of uh, finding the mean. The mean is something totally different. That's when you add up all of the totals you have here and divide by the number of numbers. You're looking at the mean of these numbers. It's going to be much harder, higher than the gradient we're finding, which is the average waste per week. So if you'd like to look at how to work out the mean, median and moan, watch the next video because we're going to go through an example of how to find the mean, median and mode.